Has America forgot about the wars? What promises to be the most contentious midterm election since 1994, some say? Or, if ever, there is no shortage of passion about big issues facing the country, the place and nature of the federal government and America's future, public debt, jobs, health care, the influence of special interests, and the role of populist movements like the Tea Party. In nearly every congressional and senate race, these are the issues that explode into attack ads and more attack ads, score points in debates, and light up cable talk shows. And poll after poll, these are the issues, supposedly, that voters say are most important to them this year. But is there anything missing on the campaign landscape? How about war? The United States is now in its ninth year of fighting, going on ten, in Afghanistan and Iraq, the longest wars in American history. Some 5,000 men and women have been killed. More than 30,000 have been wounded or injured. Some so gravely they are returning home to become, effectively, wards of their families and communities. And in those nine years, the United States has spent more than one trillion dollars in combat operations and other parts of the war effort, including foreign aid, reconstruction projects, embassy costs, and veterans health care. And the end is not in sight. And could it be that the wars are having an effect on the economy? That is a real possibility. So why aren't the wars and their human and economic consequences front and center in this campaign, right up there with jobs and taxes? The answer is very likely that the vast majority of Americans wake up every day worrying with good reason about their economic security, but they can opt out of the call to arms unless they are enlisted in the armed services or have a family member who has stepped forward. Nothing much is asked of them in the war effort. Kind of like out of sight, out of mind. The all-volunteer uniformed services now represent less than 1% of the American population, but they are carrying 100% of the battle. And it's not unusual to meet an army infantryman or marine who has served multiple tours in Iraq and or Afghanistan. Moreover, the majority of those in uniform come from working class or middle class backgrounds. The National Guard units and reserve forces that have been called up, some for more than one tour, draw heavily on first responders, as well as farm, factory, and service workers. Their families live in their own war zone. At a recent Minnesota event for military families, the mother of a National Guardsman who had an extended deployment in Iraq described how she and other Guard mothers changed their lives while their children were in harm's way. We close the blinds on the windows overlooking the driveway, she said, so we don't see the army vehicle arriving with a chaplain bearing the unbearable news. So, as the campaign season careens to an end, military funerals will be held in country burial grounds, big city graveyards, and at Arlington National Cemetery. Military families will keep the blinds closed on the windows facing the driveway. While campaigns trade shouts of witchcraft, socialism, greed, radicalism on both sides, warriors and their families have a right to ask, what about us? If this is an election about a new direction for the country, why doesn't some candidate speak up for equal sacrifice on the home front? as well as the front lines. And this is not just about military families. As important as they are, we all would benefit from a campaign that engaged the vexing question of what happens next and the long and so far unresolved effort to
to deal with terrorism. No decision is more important than committing a nation to war. It is, as politicians like to say, about our blood and treasure. Surely, blood and treasure are worthy of more attention than they've been getting in this campaign. It is becoming more and more evident that it's time for real change. Huge changes must come to this world because it's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations? A world where there is endless war, squandering our national treasure, more lives, and yes, more money. And these are more signs of the end times, transition days, which is a continuing day by day process. In other words, everything that must change must change quickly, rapidly, and for the better. Yes, it's time. Joel, chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet upon the earth, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all of the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the day of the Lord comes, for it is close at hand. 2. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there is never been ever the likes, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. 3. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is as the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yes, and nothing shall escape them. 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. 5. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devours the stubble, as a strong people set in battle array. 6. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. 7. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. And they shall march every one on his ways. And they shall not break their ranks. 8. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path, and when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. 9. They shall run to and fro in the cities. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up the, upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. 10. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. 11. And the Lord God Almighty shall utter His voice before His army, for His camp is very great, for He is strong that executes His word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And all these are more signs of many different kinds happening all around the world.